Bakayoko's friend and former Premiership referee Graham Barber, who now lives in Spain. As soon as the 1st of January came about, um, first game, I had the first live game, Liverpool-Bolton, went great. Saturday, another great game, 3-3, really exciting, West Ham and Fulham. Um, sure enough, difficult game with lots of cards and you know, one cent off and the normal stuff in, in, a, in a tough game. Saturday wasn't an easy game. Ten yellow cards, one red, 3-3, three, three, late goal, West Ham fans unhappy. You've come off challenged, feeling good. What, what sort of reaction have you had to that? Well, it, I, mean, I mean, the thing that was amazing, and, and you know, it's unusual in England to get a police escort away from the ground. Yeah. Getting the people carrier to, to follow straight in behind the Fulham coach, the, the aggression on the, on the West Ham fans' faces, and, and this, I mean, the abuse they're shouting, you fucking arsehole, wanker, and just don't hope you die. And you know, stuff like that, that you just, you just look at and just think, the good thing about that is I now feel strong enough and resilient enough to cope with that again, mm. like we always have done. Yeah, yeah. You know, two months ago, I couldn't have handled that. I'd have yeah. been in tears. Yeah. Almost unbelievably, in 1984-85 season, I refereed, um, refereed a final, a Hearts final, and I said to Mum afterwards, I said, in the year 2000, I'll referee the FA Cup final at Wembley. And uncannily, yes. that's exactly what happened. I mean, and just you, you were always striving for the next step. You know, when you did Hearts County, you said, oh, I want to be on Isthmian League. Yeah. And, and that, you always had that drive and the goal, that was what you wanted, wasn't it, to improve? Yeah. If they're playing football and want to get on with it, then let's let them get on with it. If they're making it difficult for us, we'll have to play the grass and the free kick. What are, you, what are you actually looking to do now when you do this? Just making sure the net's fully secured so that a ball can't come in, miss and sneak in here, end up in the back of the net and the pace of the ball, it's in the back of the net, I'm over there, assistant's a long way away, you might end up giving a goal. So, I mean, this is done from the very, very first match I ever refereed back in 1980. The first two or three months mum drove all the time and I was learning to drive because I was just, just 17 and, uh, and then after that I started to drive to the games and. Um, and then mum used to drive home. I wasn't probably a good enough state to, to drive myself home. But, and at that stage, I think, you know, people, you know, we've we looked at the, uh, the, the abuse side of it and fans and that, it wasn't as bad. It was, you know, we're talking back in the early 80s. Um, and so that they, are, they are very, very much happy memories, but um, that's not to say that in 10 years time, looking back at, at, at now, that they won't be happy memories because you tend to block out some of the bad times. <laughs> I don't know the first time we even thought about Football League. No, no. Because when I started, it was just to referee a football just match. Just to referee on a Saturday, really, wasn't it? On yeah. a Sunday. And then to referee on the town ground was always a... Oh, gosh, yes. Yeah, ambition, down at Stevenage. Yes. So, and you, your cup finals, the local cup finals were played there, and I remember having a nightmare there. It was uh, <laughs> <laughs> one of my finest debacles, that was. You know, when you think about it, in 20 minutes or so, we're going to be lined up in the, in the tunnel waiting for the, the normal anthem to come on. The players are up for it. The, ad, the adrenaline starts to go. You can't buy what I do, and that's why we do it. It's almost like playing, uh, almost but without the ability. <laughs> See you in a minute. More games and more training followed. Seven months and 36 matches into the season, Graham was in Manchester to take charge of the FA Cup tie between United and Reading. In the hotel that morning, he announced his refereeing career was over. Uh, FA Cup day, an exciting day always, and we're here in Manchester for the, uh, the game 5.15 this evening, uh, Manchester United against Reading. Um, and I've come to a decision. Um, after much I'm an hiring, I've decided that this will be my last season. Um, come the end of this season in May, I will uh, officially hang up my whistle and uh, become Graham Pohl ex-referee. Sidwell lays it off to Michael Carrick. Oh, it may well have been the last attack, but it's the one that counted. And on his journey home from Manchester, daughter Gemma was his new interrogator. But you must find it hard to give up after a good game like that with a big atmosphere and 70,000 people. Um, no, I just it, it just feels that um, I've been doing it 27 years, and yes, that's that's you know has been a big part of my life. But it just feels like that it, the time is right to stop, uh, to 
stop at the top to enjoy the games this season um, and then move on. It just feels like a weight's been taken off in a way. Yeah. Although he has enjoyed it, he's had a lot of enjoyment from it over the years. The last season it hasn't been the same. It's just had a different feel about it and he hasn't enjoyed it. And it's been sad watching him going to do what he's always loved doing and seeing that he's not getting as much pleasure from it. Mm. There will have been times this season where he will have come back, though, and said, oh, I've had a great game today and I've yeah. loved being at Old Trafford or, or wherever. Um, yeah? I don't know so much this season. I mean, he, he loves being out on the pitch and he loves the rapport with the players and being part of that scene, but he hasn't had the buzz from it this season than he has in previous seasons. It's... Kind of like the gloss has been taken off it somehow. Mm. You've made the decision. Do you feel sad? No, not at all. Not at all. That's, I, I, I never thought I would feel like I feel now. I'm so glad I didn't stop last summer. It feels very positive and it feels I'm ready for the next challenge. And the next challenge isn't blowing a whistle. It, to, to people always ask you, how on, earth, how on earth do you do it? How are you a referee? Why are you a referee? And doesn't it hurt you when you've got 60,000 fans chanting at you, you know, the referee's a wanker? Well, that's, that's what we do is, is we, we disassociate ourselves with that. That's not Graham Poll. They don't know who Graham Poll is. It's the referee is a wanker or who's the bastard in the black. It, it's not a personal thing. And so therefore it doesn't affect you. This season, the chant from the home fans, which is of course 90, 95% of, 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 the, um, of the spectators, the chant for me is World Cup and you fucked it up. And that is difficult to ignore because you know it's true. But that's been something this season which has been different for me. I've been unable to disassociate myself with that situation. And that clearly affects my enjoyment of refereeing that game and also takes your concentration away from key decisions. While Pole found the World Cup chants hurtful, 